So today I've got my hands on the brand new Geekom Mini Air 11. So this is a compact mini PC running full Windows 11 Professional and featuring upgradable RAM and storage along with dual display output and is powered by an 11th gen Intel Celeron processor. Now first of all inside the box you will find a user manual you're getting this drawstring carrying pouch which is actually finished in this velour or suede type material. We've got a VESA mount and some screws to mount this at the back of your monitor. This comes with a mini display to HDMI adapter, a regular HDMI cable, power cable, a power supply to go with it, and last but certainly not least, the mini PC itself. Now this mini PC is powered by an 11th gen Intel Celeron N5095 quad core clocked at two gigahertz. Now for graphics, you've got integrated Intel UHD 605, along with eight gigs of DDR4 RAM, upgradable to 32 gigs max. You've got a 256 gig M.2 PCIe SATA SSD, and that's upgradable to one terabyte max. This supports five gigahertz Wi-Fi AC, gigabit LAN, and you've got Bluetooth 4.0. It does come pre-installed with Windows 11 Professional and supports 4K at 60 FPS. Now this mini PC is actually finished in a combination of metal and plastic. So you've got metal going all the way around. The base is also made from metal and the top is made from a reflective plastic finished in black. Now you've got the Intel inside and Geekcom logos. On the front, we have a USB Type-C port and that is for data only. You've got a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, headphone jack and a physical power button. If we keep going on this side, there is a Kensington lock. And at the back of the mini PC, you've got power socket, mini display port, gigabit LAN. We've got two more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. We've got another Type-C port and both Type-C ports are for data only. Um, they don't support display out. And just underneath, we have our 4K HDMI display out. And on this side, full size SD card slot. And that brings us back to the front. Okay, just quickly check out the internals. Four screws to open. Let's open them quickly. So first of all, if we look at the RAM, you can see we have two RAM slots and one is occupied by eight gigs of RAM and each slot supports 16 gigs of RAM max. So that's 32 gigs altogether upgradable. And over here we have our SSD drive. You can see it's got 256 gig, that's M.2 NVMe. So Windows is installed on this drive. You can switch it out for up to one terabyte max, but then you would have to reinstall Windows if you do. So two easy to upgrade options you get with this mini PC. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this hooked up to my TV and capture card and we're gonna find out exactly how good this mini PC really is. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this mini PC took 17 seconds to fully load up to the Windows desktop. And this is the full version of Windows 11 Professional, giving you a full PC experience in a mini compact size. This system can run all your regular Windows applications and you do have the Windows App Store so you can download all your favorite games and apps. And this should run most casual games like Candy Crush, Asphalt 9, etc. with no issues. But I will also be testing GTA V to see how it performs a little bit later in the video. Now let's check out system properties. So you can see we are running Windows 11 Professional with the Intel Celeron N5095 quad core clocked at two gigahertz. You can see the RAM information here. So eight gigs of RAM, 64 bit OS. And if we have a quick look at activation, you can see it's already activated and ready to use. And quick look at the system storage info. We have 256 gigs of internal storage from which 237 gigs are usable. And from that we have 209 gigs free to use. So I've not installed anything yet. Out of the box, this is what storage you get. And the second drive, which I just plugged in, is my 128 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples. So we're now gonna play some 4K video samples from a USB drive to see what sort of performance we get. So first video is the high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo. That's 160 megabits per second. And as you can see, it's playing nice and smooth. And we already have the required codecs to play. So I didn't have to install any other media player. I also tried the 180 megabits per second video file. And again, that played really well too. And the biggest test, the 400 megabits per second jellyfish demo. And as you can see, it's playing sweet. So high bitrate 4K video from USB drive plays very well. Okay, so the next few clips are 4K 60 with HDR. Let's see how they play. box 
will give you super smooth 4K playback from USB, and that includes various different formats like MP4, AVI, MKV. So it's nice to see that all codecs are already pre-installed. I didn't have to install anything separately. So let's move on now to some 4K streaming on YouTube. So the first clip is 4K60 Costa Rica demo. And as you can see, it's playing nice and smooth with no stuttering or buffering. So great 4K streaming, and I'll play a few more 4K trailers for you guys to check out. So next I tested Netflix from the web browser and I was able to stream a maximum of 1080p on Netflix. And I also loaded up Amazon Prime Video from the web browser and I can confirm it does also support HD streaming. You go get the ball because I'll, I'll ball. explain to the ladies and gentlemen why we're here. You see, the thing is, we are here. So moving on to some gaming, starting off with Asphalt 9. Next up, GTA V, and I did set the graphics to 1080p very high to see what happens. So as you can see, 1080p with very high graphics. The game looks okay, but it is unplayable. It's very choppy. Um, so definitely going to turn that resolution right down. So resolution went down to 720p, and I set the graphics back to normal. And now we're achieving a slightly better frame rate of around 17 to 21 frames per second. Still not great at 720p. I was expecting at least 30 frames per second, but it is what it is. Okay, so moving on, here are the results for the Wi-Fi speed test. Download speeds were 60 megabits per second and upload speeds were only three megabits per second. So whilst the download speed is the top speed we get in our office, the upload speed is not. We usually get around 18 megabits per second upload. Uh, for some strange reason, we're getting only three. Okay, so moving on to the benchmarks, starting off with Geekbench, and you can see single core score 631 and multi-core score 1993. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved 223K. Also, this mini PC has achieved a CPU passmark score of 4014. So let's see how this compares to the others. And here is my top mini PC chart for 2022, showing you all the latest mini PCs and seeing how they compare with each other. And as you can see, the new Geekom Mini Air 11 has taken position 10 on this chart with a passmark score of 4014. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online and free of charge at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the Geekom Mini Air 11, offering a pretty decent mini PC for the price and it's got upgrade options so you can upgrade the RAM and storage when you need to. Performance wise, it's good for everyday use like web browsing, watching videos online, office applications, coding and even light graphic design work is fine. Uh, gaming wise, it did struggle with GTA V even at 720p. It wasn't the smoothest of gameplay. So that should give you an idea of what to expect on the gaming side, but also what sort of graphics applications that this could handle. Do let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. Meanwhile, links will be in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.